Here's the amp before recapping out of the machine, of course. The cover on. It's a desoldering iron and a soldering iron. Here's the top cover off and the original capacitors inside. There's a type of All American 5, or if you're seeing this, the oil capacitors I was talking about. It says oil on it. O I L. Those black ones, they look similar to electrolytics, and then of course there's electrolytic right there. Now I'm wondering, are these burnt resistors possibly bad as well? Because there's some burnt resistors. There's all the tubes. Another electrolytic and another burnt resistor. So I'm wondering if those burnt resistors might need to be replaced. Anyway, I'll be working on this for a while. For documentation, two flathead screws like this went there and there. Take the face plate off. Switch is going to Face plate off. And take those things off. And take those off. And take those off. And unscrew these four screws to just to take the circuit board off. This tube right here was the. 12BH7A. And be very careful when putting the 6X4 on or taking it off because of this. It tends to be in the way. Just in case, I'll have a view of this side as well. And of the back side. Also, I'm wondering what does play comp mean? For more documenting, on these connectors. The clear washer goes on first, then the orange, then the nut on top, and on top of the nut goes a black ring. The top jack has two white wires on it. I will mark I will put a mark on the top jack and a mark for the top place. On this part, the 103 capacitor goes from that part of the coil to that part of the switch. The 203 capacitor goes from that part of the coil to that part of the switch. These screws that have washers on them are the ones that go on here to hold this on this side, that side, and on the bottom. Now, one important thing here is, um, this part right here, which is the playhead output, or actually no, it's the input, um, this resistor, this resistor goes right on that lead, on that lead also goes to this black wire, and this other black wire here. The yellow wire goes to the bottom part. Those two top parts are connected together to the part that goes to the resistor and the two black wires. Also be sure not to lose the small little spacers, that little brown circle thing down there. On the other side of the mic and line input jacks is another orange washer that goes on that side. This is the equalization coil. I need to be very careful around that. The recorder playback monitor switch stands up upright right like that. And this wire which came off goes right there. That hole is right under where that resistor goes. Most of that wire.
And with some of it done. That part is held on with the blue coated washer and nut. Has a blue glue on there. Ready to put a 47 microfarad in, in place of an old 30 microfarad. By the way, look at the progress. I've got most of them replaced except for that one and that one on this board. After I then do the ones on the other side and that and stuff, I'll have to then do the whole thing on a whole other amp. Here's a shot of this part. You see the colors of wires. I go to that capacitor. And for the capacitor to below it, you see the color of wires that go to it. This knob, unfortunately, I couldn't get on because this little screw thing is stripped and messed up. But I got the recapping on the first amplifier done. It took forever to do, and I'm still not ready. I mean, you know, I still haven't started on the next amp. Look at all those nice new capacitors in there. Beautiful. I left those in there, but I, of course you can see the whole mess of new electrolytics that have been put in there. Brother, if you've got a rich imagination, give it a whirl, give it a try. Now I have to be now putting the tubes back into it. Now here it is, recapped with the tubes installed. So scary handling those tubes. It's so worried that you're going to break them. You've got to be, you have to be just ever so careful with those things. You're fragile. So now I've got the cover on. Hasn't been tested yet with new capacitors, but as long as everything's wired properly and nothing's shorted and no tubes are damaged, it should work. By the way, I bought a new soldering iron today and I got a really neat tool which is a desoldering iron. I might make a video about it sometime about how to desolder. I think it's a very very useful tool and it was very well worth the money to get it. I mean it was very good. I highly recommend getting a desoldering iron. You can find them at Radio Shack. Cost about ten or eleven dollars, but it's definitely worth it if you if you're into replacing components on circuit boards or whatever. Replacing components that are soldered in, I recommend that tool. Okay, this is the other amp. I have finished recapping the other amp, but we have one casualty. The poor rectifier tube's filament has gone open, so I'm going to search for another one. 